Right, so let's let's kind of spin forward to that point. So mm. I'm booking a flight at that point. Do you say, we don't know? Do you say, here's a caveat, we may have to cancel this flight? Do you say you can't book this flight? Kind of, uh, what's going to happen? No, we will be at that stage. I mean, we'll load the, 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 the 2019 schedules around March, April of 2018. They will all have a caveat uh, at that point in time. This booking is subject to an agreement on flight rights between the UK government and the European governments, and therefore is not set in stone. But by the time we get to September, October of 2018, then it's going to be, we're going to be screaming blue murder if we don't have an agreement. And I fear there won't be an agreement because it will, there's not goodwill on both sides. Then we're looking at cancelling flights. The tour operators will be cancelling holidays. And British people looking at booking their 2019 holidays, I think, will be confronted with the somewhat less appealing options of driving to Scotland or getting a ferry to Ireland for their summer holidays. Uh, presumably you said this to the minister. What was his reaction? Again, I think that's not fair. You know, I, I said we would keep the, the, the content of the okay. meeting confidential. Right. Look, I think he's, uh, I, in fairness to him, I think he's very concerned about the need for an agreement. Uh, I did, he certainly doesn't disagree with the, the, whether we need to have, Britain needs to have an agreement by about September of 2018. I think he's reasonable to say, as he has said publicly, that he's optimistic an agreement will be reached. I'm not optimistic. In fact, I'm very pessimistic that an agreement will be reached. And I think we people over here, certainly in the UK, need to wake up. This is a much more serious issue. A lot of people are kind of, you know, just avoiding the reality of this and hoping that a deal gets done. Uh, that would be fine if there wasn't a guillotine in March 19. There's going to be a guillotine if an agreement isn't in place uh, on Brexit and the UK, there's a hard Brexit, then there will be a disruption to flights. So if you were Air France, if you were Lufthansa, if you are any of the other... European carriers, and you're having a similar meeting with your minister, mm -hmm. the one that you just had, not your minister, but, but the, uh, the Department of Transport, what would you be saying? I'd be saying exactly what they're saying to their governments. Don't have an agreement, or if you're going to have an agreement, use aviation as the stick to beat the British. Force them to accept ECJ jurisdiction, force them to accept European regulation, European rules, and therefore undermine all of the British government's red lines, uh, what they say are red lines. And that's why the reason why I think we're so concerned that there won't be an agreement in 12 months' time and why there is a real and, I think, growing likelihood that there will be an interruption to flights. There will be no flights between the UK and Europe for a period of weeks or months from April 19. It's not a long-term position. But there is going to be a disruption. And I think the Europeans see aviation as a way of we can create this havoc here in the UK in the run-up to Christmas 2018, three months before the Brexit date comes round. Maybe this is the way we kind of uh, influence the British electorate into, well, this is what you voted for, so here's the reality. And you'd move capacity out of the country, yeah? I think we would begin to, yeah, we would move, if in a hard Brexit environment and there's no agreement, we would move our 60, 70 UK aircraft would be rebased into other European airports because we're still in an EU airline. It's EasyJet, BA that would have difficulty because they have some, so many uh, UK registered aircraft that wouldn't be able to fly to Europe.